Hi, everybody. I am Brandon Sewell. I am the owner of Seal Pro Painting and now also Seal Pro Seal and Wash located in Central Florida. I'm also the host of the Off the Ladder podcast, where we exist to help home service business owners learn so that they can lead well and ultimately live life off of the ladder. Uh, today's guest, um, I have Mario here, and he is the owner and operator of Radiant Striping based out of Tampa, Florida. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show today, Mario. Um, could you just tell the audience a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Brandon, for having me here. Um, so my my background, how I even got into this space is uh, back, I enlisted into the Air Force because I had no idea what I wanted to do. And I saw all these people going to school and getting into debt, you know, and I just felt like, the something about like the trades or just doing something more hands-on and so the military kind of called for me to kind of get that discipline and mm -hmm. so i actually happened to get a career in the air force uh in with engineering technicians so they teach you like all styles of drafting like mechanical electrical architectural and stuff like that and so once i got into that space i really it kind of really solidified the love for like the construction industry as a whole like really like what i thought I was really going to enjoy. I ended up really yeah. enjoying very much. Yeah, that's awesome. It's funny. The uh, guest that I had on the podcast yesterday, he was in the uh, army for 10 years. And then he worked in the trades in the army um, and learned his trade. And then from there, he transitioned as a civilian to opening up his own uh, business contracting. So um and, and very similar to to his story, it's like, and I love this because obviously Jobber is promoting um, Blue Collar Built right now, um, promoting yep. their Blue Collar uh, Trade Report um, and trying to encourage Gen Z to consider uh, the trades as a viable option for a career and a future and not just thinking like college is the only way. So I love that, you know, between yesterday, today, interview with you, uh, there's kind of like this uh, trend of like, hey, there's there's another option. You don't have to go to college to be successful and make good money. You don't have to take on like all of that student loan debt. Um, you There's other options, military, the trades, um, you know, blue collar work. Um, and I think it's work that uh, you can be proud of, right? Um, I think there's, there's certain people out there absolutely that like they're going to thrive doing a job that requires them to sit behind a desk for the rest of their life. <laughs> and then there's yep. people who are like, I want to be outside. I want to work with my hands. I don't want to be at the same place every day. I like the, the change being in new environments, different customers, different, uh, you know, whether it's homes or businesses. And that provides that change of pace, the, the, um, just getting you out of that mundane, like every day is the same kind of thing. So, um, it's a great option for people. And, uh, I think that we disservice ourselves, our communities, um, and young people, if we don't promote the trades and, you know, present that to them as an option, because, that's the route I took. You know, I avoided student loan debt. I don't have any student loan debt. Neither does my wife. Um, so we're completely uh, debt free from student loans and don't have to worry about that or have that as a weight on us. And, um, and you know, I work in the trade. So um, definitely uh, good stuff there. So Let's talk about there's a lot of people um, who are in the trades. Maybe they've, they're have they working like a full-time job. Maybe they have a side gig or maybe they're, you know, they're, they're in a career um, and they're thinking about starting a business. Could you just kind of go into the details of how you transition and maybe like some of the things that you did, whether it was intentionally or just like, you know, just – um, maybe, uh, by chance that you had yeah. things lined up, right. Just talk about how you transitioned. How did you go full-time into your, to your business? So 
how I went from full time to uh, or like basically working for somebody to then going full time in my own business is that it was actually somewhat kind of forced upon me. I've always thought about going into business, but right. And but I never actually took the steps to go do it. And the last company I worked for, they just got hit with like a lot of like slowing down of the work. And it just became something like, look, you're doing great work, but we just can't afford to keep you on. It's just a matter of fact of like, it has nothing to do with you. It's completely out of, you know, our hands. And it was a asphalt paving and seal coating company. And one of the things though, is that we, they would subcontract their striping out. And so jokingly, I just said, well, what if I went to go learn striping and open up my own business? Would you be willing to help me out with some work? And so he's like, if you can figure that out, then absolutely. So that's actually kind of how it really started. Yeah. And, um, but for someone else though, in a different position and what I would recommend probably doing though, slightly differently is, is for striping and seal coating, it's very unique type of service. So you're always working with business owners versus like homeowners. And so it, you can very easily do it if you're, if you position yourself correctly to being able to, to transition to that part-time to mm -hmm. full-time. Like, let's say you want to just start this as a hobby just to see, get the interest going. Right. And so what I would recommend is reaching out to places like churches. So churches are fantastic um, to getting started in this type of work because they're basically closed all week long. They're only open like once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. So they're extremely flexible when it comes to scheduling, right? So the big thing is how do I schedule a project for my part-time business to go full-time in while working a full-time job? So to do that is finding the unique businesses that complement your work schedule that you already have committed to. So You're places right. like churches and banks are really great because banks are closed on weekends. So if you work a nine to five, Monday through Friday, start reaching out to your banks. And yeah. so that's actually how I, those are like my first type of clients I actually started working with when I first started getting started because yeah. of their open flexibility. Yeah. I think it's like, it just, I think when it comes down to it, like as an entrepreneur, you just have to find a way, right. And find yeah. what's going to work for you. And I don't think there's um, like every situation is going to be the same across the board. I think there's things you can do to like make it easier for yourself. Um, but at the end of the day to like get your business going, it, it's going to require hard work and hustle, like no matter what and risk. And, um, you know, I'll just I'll just throw in there this and I think I've shared it on my show before. But some of the things that helped me go into my business full time um straight off the bat like just when i went all in is a couple things like one i had very minimal debt so i didn't have a lot of uh you know obligations you know for payments and stuff like that that i had to worry about financially on the personal side um i had a very strong marriage and a supporting wife so like my wife was like absolutely i support you 100 percent. you know no matter what happens i'm behind you go after it you know chase this thing um and then the the last thing that i'll say is on top of not having any like major debt we saved money so we had a little nest egg um where if i didn't sell a job for six months or longer, maybe six months to a year, we would be fine. Um, we, uh, we started our business in central Florida. We actually paid ahead on our rent. So like we, we straight off the bat, we were like, Hey, we're going to pay X amount of months ahead so that we don't even have to worry about making where we're going to put our head at night. Right. So, um, and that was before we bought our house. And, um, you know, so that gave us like that freedom and flexibility. And then obviously like my wife worked. So like we had her income to rely on. She was a W2 employee. And, um, so anyway, yeah, so that, that really set me up to be able to just 
go all in on my business. Now, what I'll say is not everybody's in that position. So, you know, obviously those barriers to that are going to be like, okay, well, how much, uh, personal debt do you have? How fast can you pay that down to close that gap of like, okay, how much money do I need every month? If I can pay off this debt and I don't have to worry about it, well, then I can take a little bit more risk on myself. Um, and then, um, you know, obviously making sure you have a really strong marriage and strong foundation there. Cause being a business owner, it's going to put, you know, your marriage to the test, um, for sure. Um, I'm so thankful for my wife cause she's always supported me even when things have been tough. You know, I've always, I've never questioned that, you know, never questioned that support. So I'd say definitely being on the same page there, work out if you have anything, like if your marriage is struggling, don't start a business, you know, to try and fix it. You know, don't, that's like the worst thing you could do, you know? So if your marriage is maybe a little iffy, work on your marriage first, get your marriage right, get that foundation really strong. And then you can think about the starting the business. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, save money. Don't live crazy. There's so many things that I wanted, like in my early 20s when I started my business that I just, I didn't get because, um, you know, I was like, I have a, I'm trying to think longer term, you know, like my buddy used to be like, hey, you want to go on a surf trip? No, I would love to. Like, obviously, I, I surf, grew up surfing, um, would love to, but hey, I've got different goals you know i want to save that money put it back into my business um you know i i've wanted a boat for forever because i fish it's like well i'm not going to get a boat right now you know so it's just putting off like um you know things save your money and you know obviously i'm not saying like don't ha like don't enjoy life but you know really think about like what do you really want versus like what do you want in this moment you know Absolutely. so so, yeah, um, I think that, you know, if you can eliminate some of those uh, barriers, it makes it easier to just go full time in your business. And I think a lot of guys ask that, you know, I'm a part of some of these forums. I think that's how we connected was in the Jobber uh, Entrepreneurship Forum. And you just you, you'll hear people ask that, like, hey, I work this full time job. How do I know when I can, uh, you know, commit full time to my business? And I think those are like three critical factors is, you know, how's your marriage? How are your personal finances and do you have some savings and like an emergency fund? You Definitely. have anything that you'd add to that? Yeah, or? That's actually very similar to how, you know, my business has been growing, you know, especially in the beginning. Right. So like having a solid family system. So having like two daughters and my wife working a brand new job where she had a pretty flexible job before, but around the same time, she now has no flexibility whatsoever. Sure. You know, and and now it's the mixture of supporting her with her new work goals and then me growing a business. So you have to get creative of how you find like who who's going to watch the kids while I'm now trying to grow a business, you know, full time and having yeah. that set up and that support system. Right. Like you just said, like this wouldn't be where it's at today if I did not have the family support system that I strongly, you know, integrated and appreciated and make sure everyone's aware of how appreciative, you know, <laughs> yeah. anytime I can help out, I, you know, <clears throat> you, you drop, drop everything you can that you're able to, and you, you make sure you're taking care of the people who are also taking care of you. And so having yeah. that, and, uh, you, we also had to, uh, thankfully we were living a little bit below our means, especially mm -hmm. while I was working before going full time. So we were somewhat already set up because, of that same thing is just wanting just to not have to worry about a lot of different things. And so when you overextend yourself financially, it makes it where getting that next job or getting that first job becomes a, it's a different mental state of how you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't keep that clarity of your mind open to, to come up with the creative ideas of like that you wouldn't probably have thought of because you're so stressed out about like, how am I going to pay my new bill, my bills for next month? So, yeah. you know, we also had a nest egg set up that we're like, all right, I've got like a good amount of time. Like, even if I made zero dollars for this amount of time, like we're good. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and so 
And, yeah. and it, I probably have never been finer tuned with my finances ever since starting my own business. It really puts you in a different perspective of trying to grow something from the ground up. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, not to get like super preachy or anything, but um, I'm a person of faith. So I, I just think that, um, man, if you can if you can work on yourself and mm -hmm. uh, th that's going to set your business up for the greatest success. So, I mean, look, I'm a I'm a Christian. I don't necessarily like I'm not trying to like push that on anybody else. But obviously, like from my faith, I try to like have certain things in order in my life. Right. So like having a good, healthy marriage, being a good father to my kids, like being a good financial steward, trying to, you know, just to to um be a, a well-rounded person, um, I think really sets you up, um, to be more successful in your business. So, um, anyway, so I think that's, it's, it, I've talked to other people. It's just like having really strong core foundation, right? And when you have a strong foundation to build your business on, um, you know, that just really helps you in the long term. So, um, so for those who are listening, what are some of the like strategies that you've used early on uh, for getting your business off the ground? If somebody's listening to this and they're like, yeah, I'm, you know, I just went full time in my business. Um, you know, what things would you recommend them doing to to get that business out there? Well, if you're in a service business, which I'm, I'm assuming a lot of your listeners are. Right. Yep. Whether it's a construction service, like for mine, a business to business style service or a home service. Um, the Google profile page is definitely been the, one of the most critical avenues for growing my business and being very aggressive with how I approach trying to get like Google reviews for the business mm -hmm. and um, finding creative ways to because you can do a great job. And I've learned this. You can do a fantastic job. They're very happy. But getting that review is such a tricky, tricky thing because it's just trying to break them out of what they're doing and thinking and just trying to get them to leave that five-star review. I mean, like I said, they could have loved the job and they're just – you just don't get the review sometimes. So I, I had to find a way to eliminate as many barriers to getting that review. So one of the things that I did is I generated a QR code that I put on my phone. That has a direct link to my Google business page. And so whenever I'm out in the field and I ask them, you know, like, how'd you like the job, this and that. And then if they say anything positive, I was like, great. Would you be willing to leave a Google review for, for my business? And I've almost everyone's always said yes at that point. Mm -hmm. And so once I started implementing this, then it became a lot easier. And that's how I started getting more and more reviews. So then now it's all like, great. I actually have a QR code. You can literally just scan it. It'll bring you right to the page where you leave the review. You don't have to do anything besides maybe sign into your Google page, but that's it. You don't have to, you don't have to search it up. You don't have to go click on five different links. It's literally a scan the QR code on your phone and boom, it's right there. And yeah. that has helped tremendously. Yeah, I think that's that's huge. Uh, I talk about that a lot. Um, I think one of the most important things that you can focus on as a business owner is Google, you know, because like what is ever uh, I mean, most people will say like Google's king, you know, like um, how do you find um, any type of service, you know, in your local community, most of the time it's going to be Google search. So um, having a really strong GMB, lots of reviews, um, current GMB is really important. Now, one thing that I will say that we do that's a little bit different than you with getting reviews is we use nice jobs. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, but, um, you know, when you think about it from a off the ladder standpoint, so like now you have multiple employees in the field. Um, I think when you're like that point person and you're out there doing the work, like QR code is great. Um, cause yeah, I mean like the hardest part is asking, right. And like, you just have to ask for it, um, and have a consistent process for that. The trouble, um, that I ran into like with, once I had employees was like getting my employees consistently across the board to ask for those reviews. So we set it up as an automation. So now with nice job integrated with 
jobber when as soon as my guys close out the job and invoice the customer, it automatically triggers nice job to send out a um a text message and an email to ask for a review. So that's you know, obviously I tell my guys, I train my guys, hey, ask for the review, let them know they're gonna get the link, verify it. Say, hey, when I close out the invoice, you're going to automatically get a, uh, a text or a uh, email um, asking you to leave a review. Ask them to re- leave the review. Ask them, hey, did you did you get it? Is it on your phone? Verify. And then say, oh, do, would you mind leaving that right right now like while we're here? Um, you know, try to get them to do it on the spot if you can. And so some of my guys are great with that. And then others, they're just like, I'm going to close out the job and They'll get the automated, uh, you know, uh, text or email. And if they leave the review, that's fine. Now, nice job. What's great about them is they've done a lot of market research. So I don't claim to be an expert on how to get people to leave more reviews. It's not what I focus on every day and study. But um, uh, I was in a... um, I went to a forum that nice job had put on where they talked about this and they kind of went through like how they've done market research. They've done studies and they found that the majority, the highest percentage of customers leave a review after being asked for the fourth time. So it's like the first time, you know, no, they 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 might not do it. They're gonna get a follow up second time, third time, fourth time. They finally leave the review. Now, I was very like um, skeptical of that when I sat in that like forum and I was listening to the speakers and the nice job representatives talk about this. I was like, oh, whatever. It's probably fake data. But I was like. I was paying for a program that was $250 and nice job was less. It was going to save me money. So I was like, whatever, I'm just going to switch and try it. Like, what do I have to lose? I'm going to save money. Switch to nice job. The program I was using before to ask for reviews, I had had it for three years in my location here where I'm at now. And I had only gotten 10 reviews in three years. I signed up for nice job their scientific data proven approach to getting reviews i went from 10 reviews to like 60 reviews from march to november so how many months is that april may june july august September, uh, like seven or eight months right so and and we're in a we're in a uh like our uh average job takes us you know uh, I would say like four to five days. So it's not like we're churning out jobs yeah. like left and right, like window washing or pressure washing. Like they have thousands of reviews because um, they service multiple customers a day or like lawn care or whatever. But with us being like doing these bigger projects, we are now after implementing nice job in March of last year, we're about to hit 80 um, reviews. Um, That's like, astronomical for us like we like to be able to to grow our gmb that much with reviews has been a game changer so i'm a pretty big like promoter of nice job or something similar to it because it works like i got five reviews last month and that's that's pretty big for us you know if if we do um if we do like six to eight jobs in the month and we get five reviews that's pretty good, you know? Um, and, and then some of those, some of those people that maybe didn't leave a review last month, they'll leave it this month, you know, just because they might, they might be later in the queues that go out, but yeah, by far has been one of the best things that I've done for my business is using nice job. So shameless plug. If you are interested in using nice job, uh, there will be a link in the show notes. I do have to say I do get credit if you sign up for a nice job. So if you're listening to this podcast, um, you want to increase your reviews for your business. You can take an approach like Mario's, but also if you're interested in nice job, uh, that's an option too. So, But either way, 
reviews it, it it's they're important you've got to have a system yeah and an approach a consistent approach to getting them so i love that you shared that i i literally like that's probably one thing that i harp on to people you know more than anything else so it's a really good point so well, what it's else like, it's like you said though it's like what do you when you need a service or you're looking for a restaurant to go to what, what's the first thing you do is you is you look it up yeah and, exactly and the number one search engine right now is google so it's yeah. like you know it it just to, and i've seen so many people actually in, even in the the striping spaces like they don't even have a google page they don't have if they do mm -hmm. they don't like really do anything with it so they'll have like a business has been in like they've been in business for like eight years but they have two reviews maybe you know yeah. and it's just like the fact that is, well they still do get work right so like yeah. i know that they're getting work because one, like once sometimes you just get in with a, a few clients they, they'll kind of become repeat clients but like but what would it look like though if you actually took it very seriously and how fast how much faster now could I grow if I actually paid more attention to this because the average person who is going to look up your service, they may not know the name of the, the business in their area for that specific service. Like, right. I, I mean, I didn't know a lot about parking lot striping until I started paying more attention to it. And that's me being in this space. So yeah. as a property manager or anyone like that, who's going to look it up, you know, what the first thing they do is they're going to Google you know, parking lot striping near me. And yeah, I want to make sure I pop up on that. And so, yeah, I'm definitely gonna look up on that nice job, though, that, you know, anytime I can create even more touch points, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I, I just want to throw this out there, too, is, you know, maybe you don't fully understand, maybe like, as we're talking about Google, you're listening to this, and you're like, Oh, like, I don't even understand, like, how does, how is getting more reviews going to help me on Google? Well, the reality is, is like, whether you like it or not, Google is tracking like everything everybody's doing. So like when somebody types in, you know, search terms, it's putting those search, you know, uh, terms into like a database and, you know, it's creating their algorithm, you know, and now I'm not claiming to be like the smartest person when it comes to all of that but it doesn't take a rocket science to understand just the basics that this it's like you're the more active you are on your gmb the more reviews you have the more you're posting pictures on your gmb the more you're responding to the reviews the more you're answering the calls when they come in the more you're responding to messages that you get through your gmb the more interactive you are and the more uh speedy you are to respond and do all of that stuff google is going to rank you higher in their search results because the reality is is Google has these team of absolutely brilliant people who their their whole focus is to use data and analytics to drive more customers to their platform because how does Google thrive and grow? It's obviously to keep people on their platform and using it, um, you know, to be able to generate more ad ever ad revenue and all of that stuff, right? So they're looking at all of this stuff to be able to drive more customers in. Well, in order to, you know, keep those customers coming back, they have to keep those customers happy. They have to provide the results that these searchers are looking for. And what are those results? When somebody goes on to Google, they, and they're looking for the best restaurant in, you know, Titusville, Florida. Well, they want to be able to find the the best ones. They don't want like, you know, the first three or four restaurants that they see to be like two star rated with, you know, like 400 one and two star reviews. They want the top results to be the five star, the 4.8 stars with, you know, 500 a thousand reviews right so um they don't want to see the company that comes up and has 
you know, a five star rating, but they only have three reviews and they've been in business for 20 years, you know, because it's like, oh, well, okay, they have three reviews and they're five stars, but they've been open for 20 years. Like, do not very many people go there? Um, Are they not that good? So all that to say is like when you focus on your GMB profile, you are communicating with Google and you are positioning yourself as the expert in your industry, in your profession, and you are saying, hey, I am the solution for your customer who is looking for my services on your platform. And Google's like, okay, let me reward this guy because he's ticking all the boxes. He's got reviews consistently. He's responding to the reviews. When the calls come in through his GMB, he's answering the calls. If somebody messages him, he's answering. So um, it's not like... People like myself, Mario, when we talk about, you know, using Google and how important it is, it's not like we're just like, you know, it's not just like our own opinion. It's just like the reality. It's it, it works. Right. And it's yeah. and it's important for your business. And, and I'll say this to go even deeper to reiterate like what you're already kind of saying and and that it's not just about the review. Right. Like you, you said, like Google wants to provide the best information to to whoever's looking that up. And so that goes into how do I provide the best customer experience that I can to the people who are now hiring me to go do this service. So that way, when they are leaving that review, they're leaving a very well, sometimes well-written review with like, you know, explaining their experience, right? And that's kind of somewhat the point of the review is that this person said that they're going to do what they said they're going to do. And they did it very, in in a way that, compelled me to actually leave a review because not everyone leaves review. I mean, how many restaurants I've been to that I don't actually sometimes always leave a review. Yeah. Right. So to, how do you create that experience for the customer? It, cause, it, cause you can pay people, right. And they're very cautious to this because of paying for reviews. You, de- you definitely don't want to do that because I literally just, you. I literally just took a note to like mention that and you said it. (laughs) Yeah, you don't want to do that. So like that's why I want to like kind of make a point like it's not about getting all the reviews, right? The the deeper principle is how do you create such a very good experience for your customer so that when they do leave a review, they're leaving a very well-written review for your business and that's going to reiterate to Google and enforce – Google's opinion on your business that you are going to be the solution because they want to provide the best experience for whatever someone's looking for, right? Like you said, they don't, they don't want to push a two-star review of someone of people having a bad experience because now, now that person's having a bad experience with their platform and they don't want that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I want to also say, so like definitely don't pay for reviews because and there's there i'm going to get into two reasons one google with ai right now is i mean whether like i said whether you like it or not and whether you realize it's happening google is tracking everything that you're doing it's just the reality they're they're buying your data you know so like when you when you text somebody and you know it's a, and you're like t- soliciting somebody for a review on your phone google's picking that up and they'll they'll actually they'll take your reviews away it's happening to people more and more lately you'll hear these business owners saying like hey i had so and so amount of reviews and now like they're gone or um you know, I had this person who I asked for a review through like a text message. They left the review, but it's not showing up on my Google My Business profile. And this person's like screenshotting and showing me like on their phone, like here, see, I left the review, but it's not showing up because Google is trying to crack down on fake reviews. Like if it's not an authentic experience, if Google can can tell or like through their, you know, data that they're pooling. Uh, like I said, I don't fully understand how they do it, but I know they are doing it. And they're trying to crack down on people who are like paying for fake reviews because it's it provides a false pretense to the potential customer that that's a, an authentic experience when it's not. 
So like don't solicit reviews from, you know, business partners, um, referral partners, um, family members, friends, if they have not used your services. Now, if they've been a paying customer, if they've used their your services and they can actually give an authentic um, response to the service that you provided, 100%, like do that. But don't be out there trying to get people to – don't be out there paying for reviews or you know trying to pay like family members or friends to leave your reviews when they haven't used your services. It's not – and it, like I think it also goes back to just having integrity – and and honesty with your customers it's like you want your customers to have a genuine and authentic experience and part of that is your reviews if you're out there and you have like these fake reviews from people that actually haven't used your services like you're like hey buddy can you leave me a review and um he's never used your service like oh yeah so and so uh you know is amazing they do amazing tile work blah 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 leave the review it's fake and then you go out and you do a terrible tile job <laughs> it's like yeah. anyway so um yeah don't pay for them and then the other thing that i wanted to bring up while we're talking about google is google is actually going is making a shift and they're they're talking about this where they want to keep um people on google's platform right so they don't want to send your customer like if they come to your gmb they want your customer to stay on google to interact with you as a company they don't want to send that customer their customer to your website oops uh, hit my cord um they don't want to send you know that customer to your website so your website is going to Almost, I don't want to say it's going to become obsolete, but it's not going to be as powerful as your GMB um, in the future. Your GMB is going to be like everything. So if you're pouring a lot of like attention and uh, money and investment into your website and you're not working on your GMB, you're really doing a disservice to yourself because when Google really starts to like push that, then gmb is going to be the people who are winning with their gmb now are going to be the ones who really are able to capitalize on that when google's like hey you know your customers we're going to direct your customers not to your booking link on your website but they have to book through google and use google's booking service does that make sense absolutely so yeah. So I, I don't know if you're if you know about that, but it's definitely like it's happening. Um, there's been people who have talked about, um, you know, like customers not being able to like go to their, um, you know, external booking link. It's like they're trying to get people to stay on Google's platform. So definitely something to uh, to think about. So Google's uh, and it's going to be interesting too to see where Google and AI head. You know, like. Oh, yeah. I would say for business owners, be thinking about that. What's the potential that, you know, you know, it's going to home services or whatnot is going to go to a, a place where it's like, hey, Google, um, you know, I need a painter near me and book. It's all voice activated. It's all like, you know, everything becomes like just done through like alexa you know yeah <laughs> so um it's a lot 